Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you seasoned veterans of what we do around here. What we do around here is bring about coaching-related topics on a variety of uh, subjects, and we also bring about uh, uh, mental health and emotional wellness approaches. So hopefully there's something that's of benefit to you. There are over 450 audios available on that on those topics. If you are dealing with kind of getting into bad habits, whether it be because of the pandemic or just bad habits in general, and you want to improve your quality of life mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, or a combination of all of the above, uh, the best way to do that is get in touch with me. We can do that through two ways. The first way is have a conversation through Twitter at PO Perception, or you can reach out through the website here on the um, here on YouTube. And there is in the About Me section, my personal website is there. That's a good way to get in touch as well. So hopefully that's helpful for you. Um, but today we're going to kind of talk about bad habits of things that can lead to mental health issues for the, uh, for the future. So falling into these bad habits can create a lot of unexpected and unfriendly consequences. So the first is self-deception. Self-deception is one of the biggest things I see with clients, and I've worked with over 15,000 in dozens of countries. When one is lying to themselves, when they are um, kind of getting to a place where it's just, I, I can't handle this, I don't want to confront this, I'm afraid of what it means to deal with these emotions, or this situation, or this financial challenge, or this relational challenge, or whatever it is, self-deception actually becomes an unconscious habit. Because what happens is we begin to shift our narrative into what makes sense with what we have been believing, and we don't actually ever really look at the truth of the situation or the circumstances surrounding and the things we need to do to get ourselves out of situations if they haven't been healthy. This can be super problematic if it, if it affects other people, so we'll blend that together with the lie to others when you begin to lie to yourself, you lie to others by omission. And one of the most common things I see with people that struggle with mental illness is the narrative they tell themselves bleeds over into the narrative they tell others. And they're not really thinking about the consequences as it relates to how it affects other people. Um, because, you know, in order for their life to keep going, they have to hold on to the narrative, which means the deception they're giving to people, whether it's intentional or, or by proxy or unintentional, kind of spills over into every area of their social interactive. The next is much more simple, but bored eating. We all do it. You know, you grab a bag of chips, you grab a bag of candy, or you grab that leftover pasta, and you're eating, watching TV, or sitting in front of your computer, or binging Netflix, or whatever the case is of what you're doing, and you're eating just because, well, what else is there to do? Board eating can lead to sugar-related issues. It can lead to weight loss. It can lead to different or, or weight gain. It can lead to struggles with sleep. It can lead to unhealthy dietary issues, long-term health consequences, and self-image-related issues when, hey, I gained 20 pounds in a month. Uh-oh, how'd that happen? And then taking responsibility for the fact of the board eating being a problem isn't something the average person wants to do, and if they do, often... You go back to kind of blaming yourself or self-deprecating negative self-talk and behavior that doesn't serve the greatest good. The next thing is focusing on the past and rumination. You know, look, we've all, we all have a history and there are many things in all of our histories that we'd rather have not done, we'd rather have not experienced, we'd rather have not seen or whatever the case may be. This isn't good or bad, it's just part of the human experience and the realities of that experience mean that there are, in fact, some challenges as it relates to, you know, coming to the reality of, of dealing with and coping with the challenges from our past. However, if you stay in rumination or negativity or negative reflection for an extended period of time, it can actually trigger panic and anxiety and depression and other mental health challenges because no matter how many times you relive an event mentally, you're not going to be able to change the history of the event itself. And so it's super important to actually look at either putting a time limit on 
the the times you reflect for me i have at least one day a month i allow myself to get into anything that's negative left over from the past but that's it it's that one day a month sure it's 12 days a year i'm losing but at the same time 12 days a year versus doing it every day and and having it become you know weeks or months of lost time i can handle that and some months i'm lucky if things are going really well um, I don't even use those days, so maybe it's 12 or less days in, in a year that I lose to rumination. Another way to do it is to give yourself, hey, I'm going to reflect for half an hour every day on um, on things I wish were different, and that's it. And then when a half hour is over, the timer rings, and I'm good, and I go, and I go do what I need to do. The next is taking lack of responsibility or blaming others for, uh, you know, kind of not... Uh, getting to your responsibilities financially, emotionally, mentally, relationally, um, professionally. No matter where we are in terms of not meeting our responsibilities or objectives, the minute we blame other people, even though we can blame, well, if it hadn't have snowed, but in reality, could you have prevented or reacted differently to the snow in advance um, to prevent issues? Now, there are acts of a higher power or traumatic experiences or um, sudden emergency events in life. And those are to be excused. But, however, not taking responsibility for anything other than an extenuating circumstance can become a habit, which ultimately leads to not only bad habits, but unhealthy social interactive consistencies. The next is the habit of complaining about situations. Again, it's a, if you need to vent about something that's perfectly acceptable, get it out. And that is, that is um, necessary. But put a time limit on it, whether it's a five-minute conversation, whether it's going and hitting the heavy bag in your basement, whether it's using art or another healthy uh, reality to kind of deal with those. You can have the conversation. You can have the moment of thought or the moment of reflection. But limit it so that complaining doesn't become your habit. And I can honestly say I was raised in an environment as a child where complaining was like every day, all day. It literally was. If you heard someone in, in the household I grew up in with my biological parents, if you heard someone in that household say something positive for more than 30 seconds, you literally thought they were sick or dying. And it does have a profound effect on your... Uh, mental awareness when that becomes a problem. The, the history of over-promising is another major issue because at the end of the day, the over-promiser is the person who is the people-pleaser who doesn't want conflict. The reality is, though, over-promising can get you into a whole lot of trouble because when you can't follow through on the promises, you have to confront the fact that you didn't keep your word or, 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 or do what you said you were going to do, and that becomes uncomfortable. But also, in the scramble to try and keep your word and, and do what you said you were going to do, you can actually make yourself super unhealthy and unwell by burning kind of the candle at both ends and, and getting into a negative pattern. Um, allowing the continuation of toxic or abusive behavior just because... It gives you a place to stay, or you don't have any money, or you, whatever the case may be, or you think they're going to change, or whatever. Look, I'm not for, I'm not in in favor of giving up on people just because they're going through a bad situation or they have an abusive history. People can change. They can make a difference. They can alter their behavior and learn to behave in a more loving, kind, and meaningful way. However. If you're months in or years or decades into a situation where you allow toxic, negative, or abusive behavior, you have to take some level of responsibility that you are allowing this, thereby co-creating it, and creating an environment where, in fact, the person or persons that are doing you harm have no incentive to change. After all, if you're just going to allow them to get away with the negative behavior, why would they change, especially when they have rationalizations for the reason they've been behaving in that way all along? The next is procrastinating or being lazy, becoming a couch potato, or getting involved with um, you know, repetitive tasks, whether it's constantly reading a book and reading the same sentences over and over, or whether it's something like 
looking at your phone, staring at your phone, um, becoming obsessed with social media or text messaging, uh, going to Netflix or other streaming services and binge watching things. Look, planning to do that for a day to give yourself a day off for half a day or whatever, that's fine. But when it becomes a, a weekly or monthly habit, then you're really getting to an unhealthy place. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. I encourage you to keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.